This video will be different from most. The. And test, 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 test. Do I look really gross? We'll see. Ow! Quinlan, and I've been spending a lot of time exploring outdoor areas in this northern area of Tohoku recently. I've uh, actually recently gone to some remote waterfall areas deep in the Mataki no Sato bear hunter area. I um, went to something called the Akita Burning Mountain um, where there's uh, poisonous gases seeping out of the ground if you step off the trail. So there are literally signs saying you you know, may die if you go off trail. There was like a boiling lake of uh, sulfur with a sulfuric river um, that I recently went to too. Can't wait to edit that footage. I um, also just two days ago went to Mount Chokai, which is a really famous mountain. Maybe some of you have been there. It's um, one of the tallest volcanoes in all of Northern Japan. In addition to editing and getting that footage out there, I'll, I also have the next um, conversation with the Zen monk, Bunsei-san, to show you. So. This video is a question and answer video. I've been saying I was going to do this for a while, and I got um, a few questions, and so let's get to it. Ricardo Berumen um, asked, what's your day job? Good question. It looks like I'm out hiking all the time. Are you even working? Am I even working? Well, for 15 of the last 20 years that I've been in Japan, I've basically been running a small internet business that let me work from wherever I happened to be as long as I was in Japan and had the internet. However, about five years ago, that slowly started to dry up as uh, competition got fiercer and just uh, the nature of the economy changed a little bit. So over the last five years, I've transitioned into doing a lot of freelance translation, narration, some writing and editing. And over the last year, I've gotten into more of the tourism industry, done some tour guiding, as well as consulting in terms of uh, what areas are good to bring tourists to, etc. And uh, of course, a lot of translation and interpretation of uh, websites, pamphlets, things like that. I also, of course, been running an Airbnb for five years. That's in the place, the same house that I live in. A lot of that stuff is on hold because of the current uh, world situation here in 2020. And so I haven't had really much work at all since around April. And so that's why I've had so much time to be out hiking. I'm not really making any money uh, since April, but I think everybody's in a tough spot, so I'm not stressing about it. I'm just uh, taking this time to get all this hiking done that I want to do and um, try and improve my skills at editing videos a little bit and uh, show you guys some of the things so that when everything does get turned on again, I'll hopefully have a lot more jobs doing uh, guiding and interpretation and things like that. So yeah, if you've been suspicious about me not having a job because I'm spending all my time hiking, you're right, I, I don't. Virginia Hildreth asked, is there any piece of gear that unexpectedly was useful on a hike? And I don't really bring that much gear with me. I'm slowly learning that I should be bringing a lot more and so I'm adding more and more to my pack. But that's subject for another video, everything I bring with me is I'm starting to become more respectable in terms of carrying the stuff that you really should have with you even for day hikes. For me personally, I would just say the headlamp is always essential because you never know when you're hiking with someone who's gonna uh, twist their ankle or just uh, get so tired they can only stagger. And thus, when you expect to be down from the mountain by three in the afternoon, it could turn into seven in the evening after dark. And that happened last fall when I was taking some friends on a bit longer hike than I probably should have. I should have taken them on a short, easy hike, but I wanted to show them all the beautiful stuff that I find most amazing up on Mount Iwate. So I took them on a long hike and uh, they got so tired that they were staggering by the end of it. And so, yeah, it was pitch black by the time we got off the mountain. And luckily I had headlamp and um, between my headlamp and their cell phones, um, we had enough light to go through the bottom forest in the dark. And it was okay, but I regret not um, taking them on a shorter hike. But yeah, without the headlamp, that would have been bad. Mush decaf asks um, if there's anything I miss um, back in the old country where I'm from. Well, back in the old country. Um, I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I also spent a few years living in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so I miss the upper Midwest. Yeah, I miss the great craft beer, 
Though to be fair, that was really just getting started. That was hardly even getting started when I left. So that's more something that I miss because I love it when I visit. In terms of what was there when I left and that I missed for the first few years, breakfast restaurants. That's not really a thing here still. I miss being able to go out for breakfast. And I miss um, going out to all these independently owned nice uh, cafes that play fantastic music and are not corporate. I miss independently run cafes. There aren't as many up here and uh, even the ones they have are nice, but I really like the ones found in, you know, college towns like Madison and Milwaukee and Minneapolis. There's so many really great uh, cafes and I, I miss that culture there. I miss how diverse and interesting everybody is. And uh, Japan is great, but in comparison to where I'm from, it, it's, it's quite homogenous here. The, the bandwidth of the diversity is a lot narrower. And uh, yeah, I miss everybody letting their freak flag fly back there. Of course, I was came here pretty much right out of college. And so I was on university campuses and maybe seeing a bit more of the uh, interesting people than I would if I was just working a normal job, whatever that would be. Mary Shu asks, what places in Tokyo do you miss the most after you move to Morioka? And I miss the old gritty downtown areas of Tokyo. Um, they're all over the place. Um, I lived in Itabashiku and Kichiku, which is sort of north Tokyo and considered kind of bad neighborhoods, I guess, but there's no bad neighborhoods in Tokyo, really. I mean, it's the whole city is ridiculously safe. And I'd often walk or bike from Ueno through uh, Nezu uh, up to Yanaka. There's a great graveyard there. But more than any individual location in Tokyo, I miss the community. I um, chose to leave Tokyo for a number of reasons. Um, largely just that I wanted to be somewhere with snow. I wanted to be able to garden. I wanted to be in a green area with mountains. But it was a big sacrifice. I left a lot of good friends thinking, oh, it's not so far away. I can still see him. But yeah, no, you don't see him as often. I'm so close with um, some good friends who live in Tokyo, but I've lost touch with many other people and uh, it was a sacrifice, but I don't regret it because now I've made lots of great friends in Morioka and Iwate, Kita Tohoku in general, and I, I love the community here now as well. And uh, it was fun to live in, but 10 years was enough for me. I'm uh, glad that I came up here to Iwate and I don't regret leaving though. For the first year or two, maybe I did a little bit because uh, yeah, I was a little lonely before I made friends up here. Ninki K, I'm really sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, um, asked, how long does the typical snow season last in Iwate? Morioka versus up on the mountains. And that has been getting gradually shorter. At least it seems like it has the last couple of years, though it um, occasionally have a really snowy year. But it seems like recently you don't really only have snow in December through March. On the mountains, that's longer. You'll have snow from uh, November through June for at least on the higher mountains. Yeah, it seems like there was a lot more snow 10 years ago, 15 years ago up here than the last uh, two, three or four years. I remember in 2011, right after the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami that we had tons of snow even uh, on March 11th, March 12th, that whole two weeks after that. I remember there just being lots of snow even in March, but recently it seems like it's already spring by March. Jen K asks, out of all the trips, has there been any one where you had to quit halfway through? There's been a couple. There's a video link up here where Sam, who I was with, uh, had a dinner date and so he wanted to go back early and so we had to turn around for that reason. Um, back before I started recording everything, yeah, there have been a couple of cases where I suddenly got caught in a rainstorm and it was just the wind was so intense and the thunder and lightning were coming and it was really scary and so I, yeah. Yeah, one where I hid on the Furodaira Lodge on Mount Iwate for a while and then managed to scamper back down um, when the rain was lighter. There's been... Um, yeah, a couple of cases like that. Now I really make a point of checking the weather and I just don't hike when it's iffy, like there might be a storm or something. I don't like hiking in the rain. A lot of people, much tougher than me, I respect them so much. A lot of people don't mind that and seem to have no problem just having full rain gear on and hiking even in the rain. I'm not one of them. I kinda, a little light rain is okay, but if it's gonna like pour or be reasonably just constant drizzling, I'll, I'll just not hike that day. Mama McFadden has asked, did you ever stumble upon fans in public and I, haha, <laughs> fans. Yeah, no, I don't think I have fans, um, not yet anyways. Three times I bumped into people on Akita Komogotake, Mount Mitsishi, and Mount Iwate who had seen my videos. And so they recognized me because obviously I'm the foreigner and carrying 
the uh, GoPro. They said, hey, you know, go North Japan? Oh, in fact, that actually happened in Hakoda. There's another YouTuber who um, I'll uh, link to him in the description, Mihai, who is an amazing uh, Romanian guy who is, makes these amazing, fantastic videos of, uh, about Aomori. And uh, he recognized me. Um, maybe we're each other's fans. Maybe he's a fan and I'm a fan of his. But in other cases, yeah, some Japanese people who had Googled the mountain, found my videos, and started watching them just for information. And then, um, yeah, they were happy to see me. I actually had a young Japanese guy like a month ago on Akita Komogatake who wanted to take his picture with me, which was uh, really flattering. That was fun. More often than that, though, I just bump into people who've seen me hiking before. If I don't have a long conversation with people, it's hard for me to remember them because like 99% of people I see hiking are Japanese, of course. Um, whereas I'm more memorable, just I look different, right? And so almost every hike I go on these days, I bump into someone who recognizes me, not from YouTube, but just from a past hike. And let's say, I saw you on such and such a mountain, like last year or a few weeks ago or whatever. Yeah, and so I'll chat with them. That's nice and it's fun. Um, but uh, I wouldn't call them fans. They're just people who remember me. Yeah, people are friendly on the mountains and people who go hiking go hiking everywhere. I was hiking in Yamagata two days ago and I saw three different people there who I'd seen on mountains in Iwate and uh, Akita. So small world when you're on a summit up here, you know? Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope this was uh, interesting. I'll do another video soon showing what I pack with me when I go hiking. Um, but the next couple videos will probably be catching up with some of the adventures I've had outdoors. And so it'll hopefully be like uh, waterfalls, Burning Mountain, and Mount Chokai will be some of the ones I'll do soon, in addition to the Buddhist monk and others. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks to the people who joined my Patreon. I am very grateful to the patrons. If anyone feels like supporting me on Patreon, I will be eternally grateful. And anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the trails.